Hi everyone, we are really happy to be with you today. I hope you are, you are well. Thanks for joining us for this webinar dedicated to circular economy and higher education. So I am here today with Federico, Phoebe and Colleen, and it's an international webinar and we will uh, well, go back to that in a few minutes. So to start with, okay. So to start with, sorry about that. So who is Circulab and who are we? So Circulab is a strategy agency and design studio for a circular and regenerative economy. So what does that mean? That means we work to regenerate ecosystems. So we work with uh, well companies, we work with uh, cities, with associations in order to help them regenerate ecosystems and create the more positive impacts on living ecosystems and territories. For that, we adopt a systemic thinking when we design. So we can design products, we can design services, we can design business model. And every time we try to take into consideration the viability of the model, the desirability of uh, well, the solution and the offers, the feasibility, but also the circularity uh, to take into consideration the nature in the value creation. And obviously we try to, well, apply the different principles and fundamentals of the circular economy to optimize resources which are already available and abundant and to enable ecosystem regenerations. So Circulab uh, is an agency that, as you understood, offers different services and in order to help our client well have the, the better impact they can, but also to help them well, uh, involves the different stakeholders, being the team and the partners. We developed easy to use and reusable tools to get the best from the stakeholders and to be able to gather collective intelligence. So part of those tools, you have some in Creative Commons and we will well see uh, two of these tools today. And the other tools are well, creativity tools available for the Circular community, which is our network of partners. So as I just explained, Circulab is a Circulab toolbox, but also the Circulab community, which is a community of experts spread around the world. So we are more than 70 people in 25 countries, and we all share the same vision of circular economy, which is sober and which narrative. And we also use the Circulab toolbox tools and we work with our client in order to develop the better project we can. So part of the Circular community, we have, well, two uh, universities that joined us a few, uh, few months ago. So we have EFEC, which is a, a university in, uh, in Belgium, and another one based in Lyon, in France, which is uh, Université Jean Moulin. And maybe, and I hope some of you will uh, join the Circular community soon. Uh, and, uh, and I hope you will, uh, you will uh, enjoy this, uh, this webinar. The last thing about Circulab is with the Circulab toolbox and this community, we deliver actions. Uh, so we enable everyone to take action through consulting and design services from training to project follow-up. So here you have uh, a map of the different uh, higher education we, we work with. And today we will uh, well see two case studies about two of, of the one on the map. Uh, and, uh, and maybe again, uh, we hope your students may, uh, may uh, be part of it soon. So who are the speakers today? Uh, I am Justine Laurence, the Managing Director of Circulab, and I, I am based currently in, uh, in, in Paris. Uh, and I am so a consultant and trainer in Circular and Regenerative Economy, and I work as a lecturer and teacher in several schools here in, in France. We also have Federico with us. Hi, Fede. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Federico. I'm the executive director of Colibri. We are a consulting firm based in Argentina, but working all throughout Latin America. And being ambassador of LATAM uh, of Circulab for since 2016 now. So happy to join. Thanks, Fede, for being here. Colleen. Hi, um, I am Colleen Regou, the founder of 
and CEO of Look for Loops. And I am currently based in Vancouver in the west of Canada. A big part of our circular methodology is education and specially, uh, specifically interactive training because it creates a lot of aha moments and brings enthusiasm <laughs> when putting business models on circular tracks. So I am happy to be here. Thanks, Colleen. And it's very early for you. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe from Berlin. Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Phoebe Blackburn and I'm based in Berlin which is full of entrepreneurs um, who need to look at their business models a bit more closely. And um, I, yeah, I help organizations to map circularity and understand it. And I also do some editorial work on the topic. Um, and I've been a circular, circular lab uh, facilitator right since the beginning in 2015. Thanks, Phoebe. And thanks, well, for being here today and share with you your testimonies and, and, and case studies. So before we go into detail uh, to what, what's happening in Vancouver, in Buenos Aires, and in, in Berlin, we are going to see together what is the current context for higher education and what well, should be higher education for the 21st century. So, well, quickly, uh, here is a picture that illustrates uh, the, what, what we lived uh, during the COVID-19, and we faced a lack of resilience, uh, part of territories, but also part of some organizations. And uh, the idea here is to, uh, well, it turns out we need to teach the future in education and we need to give more space to the planet. So uh, we need to, well, basically take into consideration not only in the mindset, but also in the different tools we are going to use and we are going to deliver to the students, well, how to create better impacts and how to stop global warming, but also how to improve the resilience of the different uh, territories. So this is about enabling the different students that will be, well, professionals uh, in, the, in the future and that will make it possible to design differently value chains, to design differently the product, to design differently the service or the territories. Because circular economy and regenerative economy isn't only for product design, but it could be applied and teach in any well uh, career and uh, and higher education. So the thing, the good thing is that students are ready and uh, they are well already leading the path. Indeed, we saw in the world a lot of uh, different strikes, but uh, a lot of also of, of movements that that were born uh, well around the climate uh, topic. So on the, on the left side of the screen here, we have a picture of, of uh, one strike around the, the climate um, uh, well issues we have. So 6 million people were gathered worldwide in more than one, 150 countries, mainly students, but other uh, people being teachers, being also families sometimes join the movement. And at the right side of the screen, we see here so a screenshot from the UK Student Climate Network, which is a movement uh, well dedicated uh, and created by, by students and dedicated to send a message and to gather leaders um, in order to, to lead the change around education and around uh, well climate uh, crisis. So students are ready. We need to give them and to transfer to them the good tools. And the other thing, not only we need to give, uh, well, and to speak more about the planet and about our future in education, but we also need to rethink interactions. Why? Because, well, first, first before why, sorry, it's we need to rethink, uh, well, interactions between students between, well, teachers and educators, but also, uh, well, between the teachers and the students, okay? So the thing here is during, uh, well, the lockdown, but even be before, the good uh, news is that we have the tool today. So the e-learning developed itself. Uh, you have some schools that uh, are, are, are based more than the 20% of their courses with e-learning. We also see the well, major development of the massive open online courses, so being the MOOC. And the thing here is with thinking interaction, the first question is, okay, what is, what, what place and how do we use the different e-learning things, okay? We need to find the right balance, so this is the first thing. And the other thing is how these different tools can maybe enable to value as uh, the work of the teacher, okay? 
So the, the interaction need to be to be think differently. We need to find the right balance between online and well face to face and uh, in, in person. And we need to use online courses not only to save costs, not neither to meet the needs of massive mobility, but because it makes face-to-face -face valuable and thanks to that we can maybe focus more on the human when uh, we are face-to-face. -face. So if we speak about that, the objective is not, well, uh, we take and we speak about the planet and environment already in higher education, but the thing is, it is still isolated. Why? Because you have some masters, you have some schools dedicated to the environment, dedicated to the sustainable development. Sometimes you can choose one module which will be complementary to your, uh, let's say, um, uh, well, core courses. But every time nature is isolated and it's not fully part of the mindset, neither of the tools we uh, share with the students. So the idea for, well, the, the 21st century about higher education is not to have nature isolated, but really to integrate and make nature a part of the whole mindset and uh, the all well solutions the student will be able to develop. So how to do that and how to well uh, put at the students' disposal the right tools and to enable them to build a better future. So the different drivers for action. The first thing is, uh, well, to develop the soft skills. So this is a, a survey that was, uh, was delivered by the World Economic Forum. And in that survey, the World Economic Forum focused on the main skills the students may uh, have and should have when they leave uh, the, the higher education. And here we see, at the, like the three first one, we have complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity. And here, like, we have keywords about what is circular economy and how to develop it, and about also regenerative economy. Indeed, complex problem solving, we know that we are in dynamic systems and we need to be able to manage complexity in order to solve problem. So this is about, about system thinking. The other thing is critical thinking. So we need to enable the students to understand the statu quo and also to enable them to think differently the statu quo and maybe to think out of it. And about creativity, we'll see that, but creativity is needed if we want to create new loops of values and if we want to, well, find new functions in the resources, product and objects we have around us. So the first thing is to develop soft skills. And for that, you can well uh, organize workshop and you can transfer uh, and, uh, and enhance creativity and complex problem solving uh, through workshops. But you can also enable students to go on the field. So here on the right side, we have a workshop dedicated to biomimicry uh, when uh, they, they had to well discover the nature and what is around them. And here you, you, you are able also to open your mind to new possibilities and to new opportunities. And so going on the field is, well, discovering nature, but going on the field is also building bridges between reality and higher education. So the more you can uh, enable your uh, student to work on, well, maybe partner cases, to work on real cases and to solve issues they would like to, to solve, because again, they are in the streets for that, the best. The other thing is to foster cooperation. And as I said before, not only between the students, but also between the students and the different teachers uh, and trainers. So between the, between the, the different, um, the different uh, students, it's very important so that you develop team building so that they also feel part of a community of the movement, okay? And thanks to that, you will also enable them to share the different mindsets and to learn things not only uh, while coming from the teacher, but also by the others in the room. So for that, enhancing participation uh, while organizing workshops uh, and making them work uh, in team project. And the other thing is also to value uh, well, the teaching profession and the collaboration and so interactions between the teachers and the students. And as, we, as we, we, we saw before, this is more and more possible. Why? Because we could dedicate online training maybe to the theory. And then when the teacher is here, the teacher is the one who is going to be able to design the good courses, who is going to have the flexibilities, autonomy, 
and we need to involve them into values of work to empower the teacher, but also to think differently uh, while the interaction and the partnership between the students and the teachers. And Colleen will come back on that, but uh, maybe the teacher will need to uh, transform itself towards facilitation. The other thing is to adopt system thinking. Uh, so about uh, adopting system thinking here, I like also that picture coming back to what I said before, binaries for computers. So here system thinking will be not only in what are the different uh, well, key indicators of development we share with the students, but also the tools we use, okay? And how we transfer the complexity and how can our student touch and point out the fact that we live in complex systems. And for that, we need to use the, well, good tools. And so here we developed at Circular two uh, different tools. So we developed more, but two of them are here. So these tools enable to adopt a system thinking, working at the left side on the value chains, okay? And at the right side of the screen, working on the business modeling and the value creation. So the idea here is to, well, adopt a system thinking in what we're going to transfer, but also in the tool we develop. And the other thing uh, linked to also uh, the interactions is how and what do we do with the knowledge? So here at Circulab, we decided that some of our tools needed to be in Creative Commons so that the more people can use it, the more professionals, but also the more students. It happens a lot that in class we see tools, we, de we develop tools, and well, after they are maybe not appropriate to our career or we are not going to be able to use it anymore because it was under license, for example. The idea also for uh, higher education in the 21st century is to develop open source tools that are available not only for teachers, but also for students. And thanks to that, you will also enable the students and you will give, give them uh, way more ease to participate and you will also uh, well make them actor of the, of the change. And if we, uh, well, enhance our collaboration, if we adopt our well, uh, system thinking, uh, we are going to be able to well, be sure that nature will be part of the solution, okay? And we'll need also to prove to the students and to, well, through the higher education that it's possible and that it's not for nothing, they are all, uh, well, struggling for a better future. And that could be possible. It has already been done by a lot of organizations. You have also higher education, which are leading the path. And so, well, the next step will be you to maybe move toward new uh, system and models of higher education. So the last point, sorry. So um, obviously, if we apply that system thinking, we also will make it easier to apply and create new loops of values, okay? And think out the notion of waste. Because the more the planet is part of the mindset and of the, of the thinking, the more also we enhance cooperation between uh, the students, but also the different organizations they may work for and with, the more uh, value creation and loops of value we'll be able to create. So circular economy is part of the solution, but will be also way more easy to develop if higher education leads the path. So now we have seen uh, this uh, introduction. I will let the different speakers to, uh, well, uh, the floor. And we are going to start with um, a, a case study from Federico in Buenos Aires with Universidad Torcuoto y Tela. Hi, everyone. So the Universidad Torcuoto y Tela, it's a relatively new school. It has around 30 years in, in Buenos Aires. Um, a fun fact that I brought for you is that uh, we made an analysis last year on, on, on a list on 10 education programs that are related to sustainability or to circular economy or, or whatsoever. But we find out that there's a very huge spread on, on how the different environmental and social uh, strategies or variables are, are studied. And, and what we not noticed is that there are much few <clears throat> strictly related to sustainability or circular economy, they, and there's more and more and more that are being treated separately. 
on on specific cases. So so um, sustainability, it's in some undergrads and, and a few masters, but but I think the first thing that Circulab has to to Circulab has to offer to you teachers and professors and universities, it's um, how to integrate the the economy from the circular economy fundamentals in in different projects yeah you may have a course of two months a course of five months six months or a year um so in our case they were they called us to to integrate all different kinds of, of areas they were teaching and, and they were talking regarding sustainability in law sustainability in, in the network on entrepreneurs on social responsibility so they were there were new students that were learning lots of these variables and they were all separated. So, so in our case, the, the objective was to unify all these topics and treat them in a very practical way. Um, just in please the, the next slide. Yeah, so we were called and to design a 2.5 hours workshop, um, which was actually implemented at the, at the mid course of, of the pro program. Um, so at the end of the four month program, they have to make a, a, a business model or a project to how to incorporate sustainability or circular economy then inside their companies or in a new project. And our aim here using Circular was mainly to, to, to provide the space where innovation can happen. You know, it's many of the, of the students, as Justine mentioned before, are, are very well informed, they are very curious, they are eager to, to know all the time more. And another thing is that they have a background, they have experiences, they have different um, backgrounds which, uh, which allow them to be more creative. And, and in this kind of workshop, what, what actually started happening is that everyone um, could start working not only on theory of, on what they have learned on, on what they have sought, thought in the news or, or every information that was available, that they were also able to work in a short period in a very practical way, how to apply this kind of mindset that we were, we've been talking about regarding wherever they came from. Uh, this was very, very uh, interesting for, for uh, as an extra resource for the teachers and, and the professors. We used our real scenario inspiration, so we worked with an Argentinian SME that actually works on the on the furniture business, and they have a, a real problem that had to be solved. So we we actually um, took those real cases to stimulate and to spur innovation, so as everything that they have been learning could be applied to a very practical case. And the, another key aspect of of this workshop is as a, as a key takeaway or as a key result was the, the the learning by knowledge sharing you know, the, the to take all those um backgrounds and take the, those experiences and to put them in the mixer and to to really really start to try a new approach on, on circular economy and the way of learning or teaching uh, all this kind of information thanks a lot fede for sharing your experience uh well Koyen. It's your turn now. Hi. So my testimonial of today is focused on a teaching experience as well. Um, as a substitute teacher at BCIT, uh, Vancouver-based School of Business. Uh, the course is about circular economy already, and it is a selected topic in the Faculty of Sustainable Business Leadership. It consists of an evening class of 12 weeks led by Rosemary Cooper as the main teacher. And she is used to bringing diverse lecture to a class. And after having joyfully participated in one of my interactive workshop, a circular one, um, it clearly appears that we will use the circular tools in our collaboration. And as collective intelligence and cooperation are fundamental in circular economy, I think we were off to a good start. So I was in charge of two sessions of two hours um, in the fourth uh, week and the fifth week. And before my class, uh, Justine, it's the uh, previous slide. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Thank you. So. Uh, before my class, the students already had some notion about the circular economy. 
they were already split in three groups and they were assigned to do more uh, to do some research on a chosen model and its linear value chain so they came to the course with an existing model to improve and with a bit of awareness about some material and stakeholders involved and the reason why this circular methodology was introduced in the middle of the course was to equip the students with so-called some tools for change. So about the objectives, my role was to help the students to develop their own case of circular economy business strategy. This assignment represents 50% of the work required uh, for their certification. And the whole idea was to ensure they understand properly and can apply circular economy concepts. So when no explanation was needed anymore, I was acting as a facilitator I, instead of giving answer or confirming um, confirming ideas i drew their attention to parts of the model that could be improved how i did it um, the first two uh, session was mainly focused on using the circle up canvas to make a diagnostic of the three existing linear model they choose and it gave them a good pictures of um, the challenge to be met. And only then they had to make their model more circular. And we proceed with inspiring cards in two rounds of brainstorming to come with a first ideation. And the second session was aimed to challenge their early stage circular business model. And on the help of that, I introduced a systemic design thinking with the support of new cards and a memo sheet helped them to sum up their drafted circular solution and they pitch it in front of the class. I also had a surprise. Uh, still like, yeah. <laughs> um, I also had a surprise in store for my students. Another piece of tool for, for change. I share existing circular example uh, directly relevant to their circular strategy ideas. And the fun is to discover that the circular economy is already happening in the market, but not always available in English. And <laughs> they greatly appreciate to open their horizon with diverse examples. I was able to translate for them and they use them. And here are my main takeaways. The circular business Canva gave students a framework to prompt and record their efforts to develop a circular strategy for their chosen business. And that's actually not my words. Uh, it's come from their feedback. Um, they get very well the systemic ripple effect of their decision impacting their business model. Indeed, the, uh, thanks to the visual structure of the tools, it's easy to notice, oh, here is an impact to think about and it's it's very intuitive and as a result uh, several weeks after they were able to present different strategic option with risk and sustainable feasibility uh, it was really enjoyable last but not least um, the flow of the team's discussion was super dynamic I am definitely convinced that the opportunity to collect to collectively practice um, circular challenge is a real gift. These students will probably be inclined to make circular decision in real life because they already embodied the process with other real people. So to conclude, as Confucius said, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember. I do, and I understand, and I feel that circular tools were, are a really good illustration of that. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, well, the, the next one and last one will be from Phoebe in Berlin with uh, her experience at uh, OSCP Europe Business School. The floor is yours. Thanks, Justine, and um, hello, everyone, again. So, yes. Um, ESCP Business Schools, um, some of you in Europe may have heard of it. It's got six campuses in Europe. It's actually one of the oldest business schools. It celebrated its centenary last year um, in 2019. And um, I was asked to design um, a half day session for the new intake for the master, uh, Masters of Science in Sustainability, Entrepreneurship and Innovation. 
it's quite a mouthful to pronounce. Um, and yes, yeah, so there are very beautiful campus in Charlottenburg, um, quite near the castle uh, here in Berlin. And Berlin's a really interesting city um, for this, uh, this masters actually, because there are many, many startups here, many, many entrepreneurs wanting to set up businesses. And as you can imagine, many of them are using the old school business models um, and not circular ones. So to me, this is a really interesting place to be um, with high impact. Um, yeah, next slide. So there you can see me facilitating with the 30 students. Um, we were two facilitators, three faculty staff who got really involved um, in the session, which was great. Um, the students hadn't met before that day. So it was the first day of them working together and it was a two year course. So this was a bit like the, you know, the kind of, yeah, the, the start of that course and um, a, a good way to start literally getting their hands kind of into business models right from the start. Um, what did the session um, involve? Well, basically we started with an introduction, the light version um, to the secular economy. So could you go back to the last slide? Um, and looking at the theory behind it, the definitions, showing students that there are different definitions out there, not just the Ellen MacArthur Foundation definition, I mean, yeah, with that nuance, um, trying to make them understand the mindset, also getting them to think what they thought it was, because some students did have some foreknowledge, others didn't. So it was quite a varied, um, varied audience in that sense. Um, yeah, so basically we use the Circulab canvas, like, as you've seen in some of the slides before, it was already mapped out for a furniture company, um, a fictitious furniture company. And they basically then had to change this business model um, using the Circulab tools, the cards and, uh, and the game um, and the board to uh, remap the business model of this company uh, to make it more regenerative, more circular and more resilient. Um, so that took about two hours, I would say, um, with about eight, eight students on each table. It was quite interactive, quite, um, quite busy and not always easy to manage because uh, it was our first day. So they were full of energy and enthusiasm um, and also getting to know each other. So that was the sort of added, added case. And we looked at the furniture industry. So it gave a bit of uh, an opportunity to explore that industry, which is a comparatively easy industry to deal with because it's about tangible things. It's not about smartphones. Um, yeah, everyone has furniture in their lives at some point. So it was quite a good, easy access topic. Um, each table had to then produce a scenario um, and a solution, which was then pitched in front of the, the faculty who became the board, a bit like the board of the company, um, with me and the other facilitator also asking a lot of quite difficult questions to make sure they'd really understood um, what, what, what that solution involved. Um, and then there was a winner um, who then got a prize. And yeah, and that was the end of the session. Um, so what were the takeaways? Um, learning about the theory and the practice of circularity. Um, I think one of the another nice takeaway was involving the staff so that this, the faculty weren't just the sort of top down um, staff as one would expect really in a university that they were actually you know part almost of the role play uh, of the pitching at the end um, and also critical thinking skills um, for instance you know is circularity always the best thing to do well no sometimes it's not necessarily um, and I think that's really important because we've got the knowledge out there um, students can find almost everything nowadays um, online but can they use that information in a critical way um, yeah, and otherwise there was a lot of team building going on because it was that first day and learning that circularity is also about working across the usual silos. Um, and I think we tried to really infuse that into the workshop so that they could see um, the problematics from a, a marketing point of view, from a regulatory point of view, from a technological point of view and bring those all together. Um, and ESCP Berlin is actually well known. It's got three pillars um, in the, the Berlin campus, um, which are entrepreneurship, digitalization, and sustainability. So it was nice to bring those all together in that session. And um, I think the students also had a really good time and then were ready to go off on that, on that evening together afterwards. And we were quite exhausted. But yeah, and I then did another workshop um, in, in January afterwards to follow up on that. Um, or for, for that annual conference. Thanks a lot, Phoebe. Thanks to the, to the uh, well, uh, three of you. So 
if anyone has got uh, questions, you can uh, you can ask it in the chat uh, in live. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, send it on Twitter. Uh, so to go further, just a few words. If you are uh, well interested to uh, use the CircleUp uh, tools in that are in, in open source, or if you are uh, interested to lead your own uh, well courses, classes, and maybe to design the next program for a circular and regenerative economy. So, uh, well, the first thing is you can join um, the CircleUp community as certified university. If you would like your university to, to uh, well, be certified and join this, uh, this community of, uh, of experts, and you could also, well, join the community as consultant to offer, well, uh, lectures and, and courses. And the other thing is obviously to download the tools in Creative Commons that are available on the website, circleup.com. And um, well, you can download it, make it available for the different students, and um, this is free, so uh, you can uh, you can share it and spread it the the more you can. Um, well, before we we conclude, um, do we have any questions, Federico, in the chat or in the Twitter? Uh, we have some questions regarding on how many students could we work at the same time with the methodology, Justine. Okay, so this is a, a question we, we have, uh, well, quite often. The thing is, we are using higher education to, well, and in, in, uh, in, in any education, actually, to have uh, sometimes classes of uh, many students. Uh, well, sometimes you'll have 50 to, well, 80 students in the, in the same room. The idea isn't fully the number of students you will have in the same room, but how many teams you will uh, you will be able to well to create. The idea is no matter how many there are, but uh, there is one key point between um, if you really want to enhance cooperation and if you want also the the different students to develop their uh, well critical mindset. It's important to well um, have them into team, and so team must be well four students if it's possible, and maximum one being well six or seven. Uh, but after, if you have, well, seven, eight, and, and more than that, the communication between them as leadership will be quite complicated. So if you really want the cooperation to be uh, enhanced, uh, this is our, our advice at Circulab. Teams of students, team projects, and also, well, not too many students only in one team. And when you have a lot of different students, there are tips so that they can well organize themselves um, in autonomy and not depend on you. So you can, for example, uh, well, well deal uh, or give them and each student a role to play. So you can have the timekeeper, you can have the facilitator, you could have uh, also uh, the, the one who is going to deliver the final uh, result. And if you well give them a role to play, they will also feel themselves way more confident in the ways to do it and uh, and they will well develop the soft skills thank you justin we have another question from tali she's asking how difficult it is to enhance teaching new business models in classical universities and schools how do you convince them adopting this new way of teaching perhaps phoebe or colian wants to share phoebe colian do you want to answer the question um, yes, I can go. Uh, for me, it was, uh, I think definitely that if you are coming also as an external um, uh, professional, it's always um, enjoyable for the students, especially because uh, it's uh, bring novelty and freshness <laughs> around the course. So it's, it's well received in any case. Um, that's my first thoughts, I think. Um, and also that is the future. <laughs> That's it. That for me, it's, it's, uh, it's really part of the future. So if you want to teach uh, and have students able to face the world of tomorrow, you, you actually have to, to switch to this kind of model. That's, <laughs> that's my, my first thoughts. What about you, Phoebe? Phoebe, do you have a piece of answer? Yeah, I would add, um, thanks, Colleen, and, and I think I would compliment what you're saying. Um, I mean, to me, actually, the whole COVID situation today is definitely pushing in the right direction. And um, I mean, I'm in Berlin, there's a lot of younger people here who are worried about the future, um, even if there are a lot of tech entrepreneurs, too, who actually want to make money as well. <laughs> um, I think slowly, we're seeing that we need to bring the tech and the 
and the sustainability together more. Um, and COVID is giving us a huge push because suddenly it's becoming a lot more mainstream and people are, are knowing what circular economy actually is about. Um, and I think three, four or five months ago, it was different. Um, and yeah, I, I think COVID is really pushing this. So it's good for us, of course, and, and hopefully for the future. And Frederick, in your case, like with the uh, university, did, uh, did, well, were they looking for such a methodology? Did you, um, well, try to, uh, to deliver them something different? How did it work? Yeah, I, I, think, I think there the, the key point is to, to in my case, there, was, there were people that were not undergrads. They were very professionals that are, were will, willing to, to get more knowledge on, on a broader uh, spectrum of, of, no, of knowledge. And when you're in that phase, you are looking for, for much theory. You don't have experience or practice perhaps on, on one specific role or on sustainability projects. So I think working through, through the business models was the, the, the answer, not to be one, another book or another paper talking about this, but actually going into the business models and, and, and going directly into a, a very practical case, I think was the trigger to, to starting with the project. Okay, and maybe another yeah, piece of answer is, well, the, the higher education hasn't evolved uh, well for years now, and we have been using the same tools sometimes. Well, for example, the Maslow pyramid, it has been 70 years we have been using it. And while well, the world is uh, well evolving and, uh, and very quickly, and I think, uh, well, a lot of teachers and also program managers well know that and, uh, and they face that and they also need their students who will finish the courses to be uh, able to face the reality. So they also anyway need to transform themselves and take that into consideration because they feel not only for the level of the of the higher education or of the of the university, but also for the motivation and the and the well employability of the different students to well update uh, and offer new mindset new methods and and so on so we have one more question Justine, uh from rolando from peru he's asking if there are any circular demo on tools linked with biomimicry um well there is there is not planned uh nevertheless well biomimicry it depends on what you mean by biomimicry Biomimicry is part of the circular uh, methodology. So every time we use a circular Canva, Palutine Canva and other tools, we try to uh, well, take inspiration from living uh, principles. Uh, we also developed other tools on biomimicry named Biomimic Cards. So you can download it. We haven't planned a demo with a mix between, uh, between the two of it, but that could be an idea. So happy to, happy to speak about it. No more questions? So, well, thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for listening to us. Uh, this uh, webinar will be live, uh, well, uh, on replay, sorry, on YouTube. And if you have further questions, if you would like to contact uh, the speakers, you can, uh, I will, well, share the, the names uh, and, uh, and uh, the name of the organization in the YouTube uh, video um, description. So don't hesitate to have a look to it, and uh, and we hope you will be uh, there for the next webinar we will uh, we will offer, and we wish you well a good a uh, good day and uh, maybe a good night for uh, the one in Europe. Thanks a lot and bye bye. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thanks for Thank coming. <laughs> bye bye.